From the management to the staff to the equipment and the interior, Chef Ramsay revamped the hell out of 84 restaurants. Ramsay put his blood, sweat, and tears into Kitchen Nightmares, but why did it have a 95% failure rate? By now, fans are aware that Chef Ramsay might yell and might scream, but he doesn't leave a restaurant until he's tried his very best to rescue it. However, some owners don't seem to appreciate his critiques. Let's not forget that they were the ones who invited him in the first place. The episodes always play out the same way. Chef Ramsay visits, comments on the interior, tries the food, reviews the service, and gives the place a makeover. Sadly though, many of the restaurants he tries to rescue end up shutting down. Many of these owners have pointed their dirty fingers at the multi-Michelin star chef for ruining their reputation, but Chef Ramsay wasn't really the problem. While some may have the ability to build a flourishing business from nothing, the owners from this show certainly didn't have that kind of luck. To prove my point, let's head over to the 6th episode of Season 6. Years have passed, but viewers are still so intrigued by their strange behavior. Now, just because you can cook up a few dishes doesn't mean you can run a business from that. And this was precisely the problem at Amy's Baking Company. Yes, both owners had big dreams for their business and even the capital to invest in it. But sadly, everything seemed to be going wrong. And this was only because the stubborn owners couldn't take any criticism, let alone run a restaurant. Plus, if anyone raised a complaint, this is how they were treated. They want you to get your from here. Do you understand? Sammy? Do you understand? You f you sir! Come! Located in Scottsdale, Arizona, this restaurant was started by a husband and wife duo, Amy and Sammy Buzaglo, in 2006. Amy was also the head chef of the restaurant and believed that she had a talent for the culinary arts. It was her dream after all, and Sammy served as the front desk manager. Since Sammy had invested over a million dollars into the business, he was practically involved in everything but the preparation of food. Both owners were present and put in most of their day into the restaurant, so what went wrong? Turns out that a couple years prior to the airing of this episode, reviewers and bloggers had thrashed the food for its taste. This is apparently what caused a huge decline in the restaurant's business. Amy, however, slammed these reviews by labeling them as lies that were spread by f haters who had no idea what they were talking about. On top of that, Sammy didn't like it when anyone criticized his wife's cooking. He took it to a whole other level by kicking out customers if they dared to say anything about the food. In truth, this was the number one reason why they were losing their business. To make matters even worse, Sammy wasn't only adamant about this rule, but he made sure the customers knew he was ready to fight. This is absolutely not how a restaurant owner should conduct himself, but Sammy had no idea what he was doing. The waiters agreed that the food was bad, but Amy was so confident in her cooking that she completely ignored any criticism. Amy kept shifting her attitude, which really worried the other staff, since she could blow up in their face at any moment. One of the staff even described Amy as Cruella de Vil when she had her fits. This is indeed concerning since the staff needed a peaceful environment to function properly. But here, it was the exact opposite. I'm not, I'm not, not, no, I'm not, I'm not making anything else. No, why? It has to go to the f***ing trash. Are you kidding me right now? Sammy was ready to go to any length to protect his wife's cooking. He was so aggressive that he asked an elderly customer to never return since she wasn't satisfied with the food. It looks like Chef Ramsay was going to have his hands full upon his arrival. One staff member even said this. I think Chef Ramsay is going to be wasting his time. He can't change Sammy's name. They're a lost cause. Now, imagine if the staff has such an opinion. Things must really be on edge. While Sammy was a control freak, Amy was highly unstable. Sammy handled all of the finances, and the checking counter was exclusively controlled by him. None of the staff were even allowed to collect the check, and this sprouted some trust issues between him and his team. Now, just because Sammy controlled everything doesn't mean that he had things under control. Sammy used to freak out and refuse to work if the pressure was too much for him. The day before Chef Ramsay was scheduled to arrive, things got heated at the restaurant. With Amy refusing to cook several orders at the same time, the customers were in for a long wait. The only customers who received their food were unsatisfied with it. And when they brought this up with Sammy, he advised them to just enjoy the food instead of complaining about it. When one of the customers walked up to the billing station to inquire about his order, all hell broke loose. Yeah, I Sammy, Taking matters into his own hands, Sammy then tried to shove the customer who was trying to leave. What's more, Amy tried to call the cops on the customer, and this was the final straw. This was a prime example of a hopeless venture, and Chef Ramsay understood this the hard way. The couple treated him the same way they did their customers. 
After a disappointing tasting, when Jeff Ramsey walked up to Amy with some critical feedback, she pulled on a defensive shield. She pushed away every criticism Ramsey had about her food. Jeff Ramsey soon understood that he was talking to a wall and said, There's no point in me saying anything to you because you just don't wear it's good like that. Whatever. But Jeff Ramsey wasn't going to give up yet. After trying different approaches, Chef Ramsay sat them down and pointed out the reason why their restaurant was failing. He said, It's become evident that you can't take criticism. Why is that? But no, Amy still believed she was the best. At this point, Chef Ramsay wasn't even sure if she was hearing herself. What I'm struggling with is that you convince yourselves that it's right. It's not. After Amy disregarded every bit of Chef Ramsay's feedback, the famous chef was saddened. He knew that he not only had to save this restaurant, but the deluded owners who were running it. This was starting to become a daunting task. Later on, Amy accused Chef Ramsay of attacking her unnecessarily. Verbally insulted me yesterday, and I held my I tongue out truth. of class. I didn't tell you the truth. I didn't Why say you nasty you? things to you. Ready? Okay. Yeah, right. Well, what we can say is that this is one of the most challenging encounters that Chef Ramsay has ever had to deal with. This is one of the only rescues that Chef Ramsay had to dismiss before it even started. He said this about it. Well, it's finally happened. After almost 100 kitchen nightmares, I've met two owners who I could not help. And it wasn't because I didn't want to. It was because they are incapable of listening. Can you really blame him for the eventual closure of Amy's World? I mean, Amy's Baking Company? Well, if you thought that was an insane display of attitude, then this next one is going to sweep you off your feet. This man managed to scare the hell out of the great Gordon Ramsay. My Located in Babylon, New York, Peter's was a family-run restaurant. Peter opened the place to fulfill his sister Tina's dream of owning a restaurant, but he took all the benefits. He was an eccentric man who had put more money into a suit than updating the equipment in his kitchen. Meanwhile, the kitchen staff struggled to make a decent dish. Peter was a constant bother at the restaurant and had a gangster-like appearance and behavior. Peter drove around in a Benz while the restaurant was going down under. If you're wondering where he got the money for his lavish lifestyle, it came from stealing the profits of his business for his own personal use. After Chef Ramsay took it upon himself to give the kitchen a much needed upgrade, it was now time for the restaurant to resume its services. This is when Peter was visited by a debt collector to whom he didn't take very kindly to. Things soon got intense and Chef Ramsay even tried to intervene, but to no avail. You can clearly see the tension on Chef Ramsay's face. But what Peter did next will leave you in shock. Tough guy. Look, get him up. Stop. Get him up. Stop. While Chef Ramsay was shocked by this display of aggression, Peter had no regard for what he just did. He simply lost all of his sanity. This was indeed the restaurant's main issue since nobody dared to deny Peter's requests. Peter not only acted like a gangster, but he also seemed to know a lot about the mafia world. Yes, you heard that right, the Mafia world. There have even been reports that claim that Peter had connections to the Bonanno family that ran things in Babylon. It took both the head chef and the sous chef to hold him back for even a little. Since Peter was quite a big man, he still managed to put up a struggle even with the two of them holding him back. For a second, Peter seemed to have calmed down, but the debt collector didn't leave yet. He was simply distanced from the crazed man. Peter was somehow convinced to go back into the restaurant, but his blood was still boiling. The owner was still enraged and continued to stare down at the car, which was about to leave. Since their grip had loosened for a bit, this was a golden opportunity for Peter to lash out yet again. And that is exactly what he did. He dashed towards the car and did this. Get in, tough guy! Get in. After the fight, Chef Ramsay tried to talk some sense into Peter, but this kind of behavior needs a lot of work and therapy. Chef Ramsay's words fell on deaf ears, and Peter continued to be the same person. This persisted even after Chef Ramsay fixed most of the restaurant's problems. Unfortunately, Chef Ramsay could only help restaurants, but not crazy people. By then, Chef Ramsay had already dealt with hundreds of restaurants and was at the peak of his career. But the famous chef had a stubborn surprise waiting for him at Down City. I think you're one of those customers that I would fire immediately. Yeah. You fire customers? I have. Chef Ramsay didn't like it when one of the owners, Abby, openly stated that she wasn't too happy with the famous chef's presence. That's insane considering how she reached out to him for help. Already, Chef Ramsay and Abby had started off on the wrong foot. Abby, being the control freak she was, refused to take responsibility for the awful food. 
Abby was in so much denial that she asked Chef Ramsay to explain to her why her food was bad and told him to bring it on. Was Abby getting hostile or was she just that aggressive? After that exchange, Chef Ramsay came back to look at the kitchen. Abby was already unhappy that Chef Ramsay had criticized their management and strongly believed that the food they served was amazing. How could one person be so deluded? Finally, Abby opened up to her staff. But when they revealed their true feelings about the food, Abby put the blame on them for not letting her know what was going on. Abby was still trying to avoid the real problem at hand, and this was going to cost her quite a bit. The first thing that caught Chef Ramsay's eye was how unclean the kitchen was. There was waste lying around, and the floor hadn't been cleaned for at least a couple of days. Chef Ramsay didn't wait any longer, and directly went to the storage to find the horrors that lurked underneath. What is that? Chicken carcasses. Oh my god. When Chef Ramsay showed the condition of the walk-in refrigerator to Abby, she took no blame for it. Chef Ramsay was fed up and started to get loud with Abby, but Abby just didn't care. She literally started to shout back at Chef Ramsay before telling him to f*** off. Abby was one of the few owners who dared to insult Chef Ramsay despite the condition of her restaurant. And she was even ungrateful that he was there to help. Abby claimed that she had experience in the business for over 33 years. But in reality, her management style was so weak and flawed that it was hurting the business. She wouldn't even listen to constructive advice. It's no wonder why Down City had to close way sooner than they'd imagined. You can't even accept it! Hey, yo, walk out again! There you go! But this next episode is sure to turn your stomach inside out. Jeff Ramsey visited Siesta Sunrise to turn things around. The business was over a half a million dollars in debt, and this was all thanks to two neglectful owners. But let's not forget the manager who had no idea what he was doing. Situated in West Nyack, New York, Fiesta Sunrise was owned by Patty, the daughter of Yolanda. Yolanda was married to Vic, and the two ran a Mexican restaurant prior to starting Fiesta Sunrise. The two managed to convince Patty to start the new restaurant for them. But because of Vic's poor management skills, the business went down under. Later on, when Chef Ramsay arrived, he was shocked to see that the restaurant served free margarita samples. And at the front entrance of all places. What's even more shocking was that when Chef Ramsay took a look through the menu, he noticed that the menu had been taped over. When he removed the tape, it revealed the menu from another restaurant. They are the Mexican cookie. Turns out Vic had just used the menu from the previous business he owned that failed by the way. Who in the right mind would do something like that? Vic had hired the same chef, had the same menu, and didn't even bother to change the ingredients when he started his new venture. Does he not learn at all? As Chef Ramsay finally got his order of food, he realized that the meat had been cooked weeks prior and that the meat was dry and chewy. This wasn't a good way to start things off. Ramsay was so disappointed that he said it would be better if the customers got drunk at the front first so they wouldn't have to taste the food. Ouch. The famous chef took a short leave before arriving once again for the dinner service. And this time, he was there to check on the kitchen. Once Chef Ramsay inspected the fridge, he was shocked to find some weird liquid residue in it. Vic then comedically claimed that it was cleaned out just about a day ago. Chef Ramsay then found cooked rice that was in two buckets. Despite both buckets being uncovered, Vic claimed that one was fresh and the other was from the previous day. This guy is a terrible liar. The place was a major health hazard, but Vic was blind to it somehow. The owner was incapable of explaining any of the disgusting stuff that Chef Ramsay found throughout the kitchen. But Chef Ramsay continued to find stale food that was almost decomposing and still being used in the kitchen despite being expired. However, when Chef Ramsay found weeks old burrito filling and solidified beef, he was so angry that he decided to take it out of the kitchen. He then shut the restaurant down before somebody got seriously poisoned. There were several more instances that made Chef Ramsay feel that the owner shouldn't be running a business in the first place. No amount of help or criticism was going to change how these stubborn owners were going to run their business. And let's not forget, Chef Ramsay was this close to getting sick or even poisoned. With all the stale and contaminated food he's been served over the years, it's quite surprising that it didn't happen. Now, if there's something that's brand new and fresh, then look no further than my channel. I'm looking forward to your continued support since it makes the effort I put in all the more worth it. But don't forget to leave a like on the video for me, guys. And hey, subscribe if you haven't already. It's completely free, so why not just do it? With that out of the way, let's see what Chef Ramsay had to say about his experience on the show. You've got no idea how bad this is for me to be away from such amazing food in my own restaurant to go and eat 
that's cooked by a Muppet that thinks he's the next Gordon Ramsay. When asked if he would ever come back with a new season, he said, I want to rest. I want my stomach to go through a sort of 12 month period with no ulcers. I don't want to walk around with Renes in my pocket. Well, it looks like Chef Ramsay has had such a rough experience that he won't be coming back with a new season in the near future at least. It seems like there are just some things that can't be taught. And the sooner people understand this, the better. It saves time, effort, and above all, it saves a ton of money. But has there ever been an episode where Chef Ramsay gave up but the restaurant continued to persist? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching, guys.